Lord, it's Friday. You know how we're doing on PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, a household name. He is an astute business entrepreneur with wealth experience in freight forwarding, haulage, logistics, and private security. He's the founder and group CEO of the Magdan Group of Companies, the group that has presence in 2,400 air and sea ports across the world. Daniel Macaulay, my guest tonight. Wonderful. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while since I saw you on TV. I'm sure you've been busy sealing up some businesses. Yes, I've been very busy. <laughs> Extremely busy anyway. When are we going to see your next challenge? The last one did very well. Yeah. When is the next one coming up? We are starting um, the challenge uh, next two weeks. Okay. Uh, will be on the TV from by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are working on it. Wow. This is what the youth like about you. A lot of young people really admire you and they appreciate what you do because you have made it an interest um, to see the development of other young people. And I think we appreciate you for that. You're from Labadi, right? Yeah, 100%. I'm partly from Ada. Okay, so mom and dad yes, from Labadi. From Labadi. And who is from Ada? My dad, I mean now, uh, Labadi, Teshi, Ada. Okay, so who is All from Teshi? Who is from Ada? My mother, 50 50. Okay. My father say almost the same, yeah. Wow. You so, know, all the, all the Adans, right, mm -hmm. the Collie family. Okay. They came from Jamestown to settle in the Ada. Okay. You have a girl name? Uh, I'm Nisha. Nisha? Yeah. Oh, okay, so. So I'm Ni. Enough of the Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Nisha. Right. Nisha, yeah. I know you grew up in Labadi. Yep. How was it like? Um. It's a beautiful place. You used to go to Inshona. <laughs> I'm an Inshona boy, you know. <laughs> you used to go for fishing expeditions. Oh yeah, I mean, we've done all sort of stuff at the beach. Uh, growing up, had been very, very challenging. Uh, but I hope you know I'm I'm launching a book. Okay, on yeah. your about your life. About my life. Everything about my life is in the book. That would be wonderful. But I can to tell read. you just. Some few. How big is it? Like this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it times, must be big. Oh, not really big, but at times, um, though the book is it's over, all, all is written. But uh, just yesterday, I was sitting down and I re remembered that look, there's a lot of things I have not even put in there. That book will be voluminous. <laughs> <laughs> it will take you a whole year to I read mean, that it's book. A very interesting <laughs> book. Yeah. Okay, so growing up in Labadi. And then finally dropping up at the university. Tell me about your primary school days. How was it like? Yes, I'll give you a little of the book, but not all, so that you. you I will look for the you'll book. You look and for read. the book. <laughs> I read. Actually, growing up, I attended um, a Saito. I mean, you all know Saito. What happened in the Saito? I went to La Wale School. Okay. Yes, and uh, those days you need to actually carry your chair and table. To, to school, school. Uh, you have to walk barefooted. My goodness. So, growing up, that is what happened. And you walked barefooted to school? To school, till middle school for one. Goodness me. Yeah, I mean, I, I got my first sandals uh, by selling some uh, togbe. You know togbe? <laughs> uh, how do you call togbe in English? Uh, Beflo? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you want to maintain it as <laughs> to be, you know, I had to, we had a neighbor who actually uh, sells uh, 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 used clothes. Okay. And uh, also kerosene. So I carry kerosene on my head. Wow. Come around the vicinity to sell. Interesting. And uh, I got some money. And I had a cousin who added a little. Okay. Yes, to buy my first sandals. And you know what happened to that sandals also? <laughs> you know those days in Saito, they would select some few to go and do gymnastics in, 
uh, six March, Tell Indi Independent Day. It. Tell me about and it. And I bought the Sanders the very first week uh -huh. of the month. And we're rehearsing. At, you know, those days, they would give us some <laughs> white and red uh, for the canvas, gymnastic. canvas for the gymnastic by okay. government. Okay. But, uh, we can go inside whilst we talk. Mm -hmm. right. Please come in. Thank you. Oh, beautiful place. Thank you. So tell me about the gymnastics and you know, I bought a shoe the first week. And uh, unfortunately for me, after Riesa, somebody stole the sandals. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> somebody stole the sandals. And that day, wow. I said to myself that I'm also not going home without the sandals. You would have to take somebody else. I else's. have to get a sandals home. <laughs> But I, go, I, I left the studio with a sandals. I have to go and hold somebody and, and take from him. At all costs? Yes. That's mine. Not those days. What, I mean, what do you care about? Goodness. Yes. Wow. So, so then when you bought your first sandals? Well, I, I, at least I kept it. So that is it. Those days, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those days also, you know, you have to... What it, you ha whatever it takes to survive, mm. you, you have to survive. And um, things happen. <laughs> yeah. So from the La Wireless... Yeah, um, I mean, I, I started common entrance and uh, um, between the Aquinas and the uh, Social Advance Institute, I chose, I chose Social Advance Institute because times were hard. Okay. And I can't afford to go to secondary school because I need a shortcut mm. to start making some money. <laughs> So it was a commercial school. Okay. So I sat two exams there. Those days there's something called display and uh, all levels. Mm -hmm. So that is what I did. And when you had admission to Legon, you had yeah. to drop out because had of to financial. Drop out because of uh, I mean, how do you go and sit in university? Uh, those days you won't really get part-time uh, university education unless the polytechnic. Mm. So I went to the polytechnic. Okay. Instead of uh, the university, university, which I did part time. That, those days I was already um, um, working at the airport as a messenger. Okay. Between the port and Tama Port. I started my working career as a messenger. No wonder you're yes. already in the port and yes. you're doing so, so well. You can't afford to go and sit in a classroom mm. whilst you have to uh, be able to grow yourself. Yep. So, out of necessity. Uh, you have to mm. obey. Mm. What was that, a, a fisherman or something? And mom, what were they into? Oh, my mom was a housewife. My father was a carpenter. Oh. Yeah, and at every point in life, there were many children to take care of. Okay. So I grew up in a very big family. How many are you? We were 10. 10 and from other, one mother? From one mother. My father had other other. Children. children, okay. So, so we're a very man. beautiful big family. As you were waiting to have your tertiary education, let me say that, at the university, what were you doing with your life? I know, I know you've been a houseboy before. Mm -hmm. You sold kerosene. Yeah. What else have you done? Tell me about <laughs> it. <laughs> I sold Togbe, you know. I sold Togbe before. I was a pupil teacher. I taught for two years. Okay. I also was somebody's, uh, I was a driver's mate one time in my life. An okay. Intro, Flying just, from where to where? Yeah, Medina, Accra, Medina, Accra, So you Madina. used to do? Yeah, you shout, Accra, Medina, Accra, Medina. You know? My God. Yeah, I was good at it anyway. Wow. I was very good at it. And, mm. uh, a very interesting one too. Okay. Uh -huh. And and I enjoyed it, you know. Okay. All yeah. of that for survival. You have to survive. At what point in time did you have to become a houseboy? At what time did you have to become a driver's mate? Um, what the, and all the others. I was once a Libra. Sakubono Estate. We started. I was a Libra to one company called B BG Builders. Okay. Yeah. So I was carrying blocks digging foundations and all that. Mm. Yeah, and mixing concrete and... How was the feeling like? Well, at that, at that moment in life, well, nothing much was going on in my mind. 
maybe because of how I grew up. I had a very tough mother, very disciplined mother, and uh, very respectful. Where I grew up, you have to respect the elderly. Okay. So my you mother were well me brought up. up. Yeah, well brought up. Okay. The only problem was the necessity. You know, um, uh, it turns out to be a blessing. You know, okay. uh, we we haven't had enough, and which also is good in a way. Mm. Yeah, imagine I had it all. Maybe I wouldn't have been sitting here with you. Talking about all the Talking successes this, you've yeah, talked. Interesting things. Having been restrained by finances, what else would you say was your biggest challenge growing up? Growing up, my biggest challenge was time. I never had enough time. <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> well, I mean, you have to go and work. At the same time, you have to go and learn. Okay. At the same time, so I didn't have it. I, and you need, you need also a life yeah. for, your, um, for you and your, your friends. You need to, I mean, Kobolo life. <laughs> it was very interesting life. Mm. And you, you need that one too. At yeah. the same time, you have to learn. Mm. I have never, ever uh, failed any exams before. As tough as those days were, but uh, God was there for man. He's intelligent always, too. Always, yeah. <laughs> so finally, when you had the opportunity to go to the university, what did you study? Um, I, studied in, I studied entrepreneurship and leadership. Mm. Yes, that time I have uh, matured enough that I have learned the traits of life. That time I have, uh, I have seen too much, mm. uh, both uh, work and uh, uh, both work and the external environment. Okay. So it was quite interesting. Mm. to go back and uh, learn something. Daniel Nishia Macaulay, my guest tonight, and he's been giving us some insights into his life. Remember, he's one of the most successful businessmen in Ghana. When I return from this break, he'll be telling us whether whilst trying to juggle between all those houseboy mates, diverse mates and all that, and going to school. Did he ever dream of becoming an entrepreneur or he wanted to be something else? He would also be telling us how to become successful, maybe some tips about how to get there in business. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. We are having fun with Ni Inshia Macaulay, and he's been telling us a lot about his growing up. So before we went on that break, we're talking about how you finally studied entrepreneurship in the university. But whilst growing up, did you ever think about becoming a businessman? Or Not really. You know, what really did you want to be? When I was growing young, I was up? very good in science. I was okay. one of the best science students. But um, I, I actually, in those days, if you do science, you have to go to university, you have to go very far before you get a job. Mm. But if you do business, it's a short, <laughs> the shortcut. Somebody can employ you as a bookkeeper. Those days, I mean, those days you have O level, you are, you are, you are a champion. You didn't have time to go to, to spend seven years at the medical school. Medical school and before I start making some money. You okay. Know, I, it's, 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 a, it's hard work. Mm. Yeah, it's hard work. So I took the shortcut and uh, did my O level. And because uh, I know if I finish, I'll get some cashier. Cash, those days we call it bookkeeping. Okay. Somebody will employ you as a bookkeeper. Okay. You know, and uh, you, you start earning some money. Uh huh. I remember also that after uh, all of us, I don't know what really happened, but um, there was a job opportunity mm. at a Continental Hotel and Golden Tulip. Okay. And uh, I applied to be a waiter. Mm. Right. And I don't know what really happened. I filled the interview. Oh. Yeah, I, I, have, I dressed up 
nicely. Nicely for white. Tucked in. Tucked in white. <laughs> my normal white shirt. You know, my normal white shirt. You love to wear white. Yeah, you okay. see some of my dressing in my book. Okay. I put one or two pictures in my book. Okay. So, uh, those days, I wore white trousers to church. Mm. So, you can imagine the, 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 the swag. So, I, I dressed up for work and I was told that <laughs> I, filled the, I filled the interview. You might have so, felt bad. I never failed in anything in my life. So I didn't know. Maybe they got the name wrong. <laughs> so I, I did you find out why? Oh, it was I went back for my uh, messenger job. Okay. <laughs> so, but little did I know that God was preparing a place for me. Okay. Yeah. So I went back. I went through the the mail. And today, this is where I found myself. We're happy for you, but I want you to tell me that story about you being a bookkeeper whilst a laborer. Yeah, Remember, you, know, you I, were I a very young boy. I graduated in, in almost everything I do. Okay. I'm a very consistent person, mm. and attitude for me is everything. So when I was young, I really I called out the, the right attitude to live. Mm. Yes, and... When I was uh, a laborer, one day my foreman came and said, you have been promoted as, Just a, like as that. a timekeeper. Just like that? Just like that. Okay. Not knowing they were watching my attitude, time I report to work, time... By, I was the smallest among all the laborers. Though those days, uh, laborers were macho men, you know. Mm. Mm. But I was the smallest. But my attitude towards work was... Uh, fantastic and um, I was promoted to be a timekeeper and I was promoted again to be a, a, a purchasing a recording officer those days when they bring cement to side that's yeah. where my bookkeeper and my you'll started. be taking I'll take records of, of all, of all that. material that I, uh, we had to use at the side your colleagues yeah. would be jealous of you because they're all older than you and oh, macho wow. I didn't have time for anybody. I guess I was surviving, you know. I mean, it was tough though, but uh, they were happy too for me because I was nice to everybody. Mm, so how come they, they wanted to kill you by giving you a lot of cement to carry when they knew you were too small to carry that load? You know, it, it was... Them days, you, they need to test I mean, and laugh at you. And, you know, it wasn't that they were envious of me. But they were, they were just <laughs> telling me, are you small boy? You want to chop the same, <laughs> the same uh, amount, that amount with us. <laughs> uh, so at what point did you realize that you had it all and you had all it takes to set up a business in 1999? Well, I've, I've never had it all. Hmm. I have never had it all. How, how did it start? I mean, how did all these businesses, Magdan Group of Companies, how did you know, it start? My whole life I've worked for people. You know, I grew. I mean, uh, a messenger, a clerk, import clerk, export clerk, tally officer. Um, I grew to be a transport manager. I, I became a... Um, a, a, a manager, I became a general manager. Wow. Right, for others. For other I company. became a partner with somebody mm. before I started my own. Company, okay. Yeah, so I've been through the ranks and the bill. So it's, it, was, it was interesting gr growing up. You started with one staff. I started, I started my company with one staff. You see? I believe in the multiple streams of income. Multiple streams, I never tried doing one thing. Okay. I tried doing one or two because I believe one is never enough for me. Mm. And I'm, I'm disciplined to be able to handle two things. Okay. So all my life, I either making money from other quarters or other corner, mm. and whatever I'm, I was doing, I put, I put my all in it. So one time in my life, I was, I was buying maize. I was selling maize. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I leave work Friday. I go to Techima and other places, buy maize. 
take it to a warehouse during bumper harvest. Okay. Hold it there. And uh, lean season, I release it. And I go brochure market women, and I'll be back at work. Mm. Yeah, so that grew. I mean, that, that aspect of, of me grew. I mean, most of my friends laugh at me. <laughs> that, oh, where your toy, bro? But finally, it paid off. Yes, I, I made a lot of money. But in my quiet selling Abele, I discovered something else. I discovered coffee beans. Okay. I didn't know Ghana, we had a lot of coffee beans. Oh, wow. So when I went buying Abele, which is, which is uh, maize, I discovered that there's a lot of farmers having coffee beans. So okay. I started buying the coffee beans from them, mm. and uh, I started exporting it to Europe. Okay. So I bought a lot of coffee for export into the European market. A typical business mind. Uh, so now you have over 5,000 employees? Oh yes, I have over 5,000. And, and still counting. And still counting. And uh, what fascinates me is the fact that you are in 2,400 countries yeah. across the world. Yes. You are a fantastic businessman. But what would you say has been the challenge getting it up there? You know, management, you know, um, you know, once, once you're trying to build your company, you have to be careful how you, how you, how you grow. There are a lot of opportunities in Ghana. Yep. And uh, you have to be careful. Um, I've, I have been very successful and I've failed in many things too. But if I put all together, my failure bring me a lot of experience. Mm. So whilst my followers were bringing me those, that, those experience, it's helping me to master my game. Okay. So I can never regret those, those followers. But what I can say that uh, the, the biggest challenge in my growing up and in my formative um, days was uh, management and human resource. Okay. Yes, it's, it's not money, but it's been management and human resource. It's difficult to get the right team, the right people, the right mentality, the right attitude to grow it mm. over here. So, but we never give up. And how did you surmount those challenges? But that, those challenges, it's still there, but, but you work around I have it. a principle in my business and my growing up. You get what you inspect. You never get what you expect. Mm. So I try. And that gives you a lot of stress. That gives you a lot of... Uh, um, you need to overwork yourself. Mm. It's not a place that you can start business and go and sit somewhere and sleep. Mm. You need to overwork yourself. You need to work harder than usual or yeah. normal. Mm. You know, because you can never give responsibility and go and sleep. You need to ensure that that is done. So mm. it's, 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 it's very, very challenging. Because in my formative years, I, there, there, are three, there are three levels in business which I propounded. The first one is the infant stage. The second one is the organic stage. The third one is the corporate stage. Okay. And you have to go, go through all this. The infant stage is where you are the accountant, the messenger, the marketing fellow. You are everywhere. Mm. Those days, I remember, I have my checkbook in my bag. <laughs> I'll be running from customer to the bank, from the bank to the warehouse, from the warehouse, sitting in the truck to deliver cargo. Mm. And my, my, my customers love me for that. <laughs> because I, I satisfy them. Mm -hmm. Whilst you're growing up, you realize that your customer base begin to grow. And in that growth, right, you have two, three, four, five customers. Yeah. You can't be at five places at the same time. So you have to use yeah. your wisdom and your intelligence to make sure you satisfy all. Definitely. And that is the organic stage. Mm. At that organic stage, you need people to come in to support you. Mm -hmm. That is the dangerous stage. And most Ghanaian businesses collapse at that stage. And if okay. you don't take time, you'll make money, but that money is cash. Mm. 
Okay. If it's you're not asset. If you're not smart, you are collapsing because mm. you will end up losing and having a lot of debt. You get money, you get business. The organic state, you get a lot of business. Mm. And that is where you collapse. That, those, were the, those will be the time where your brother's wife will call you that his brother had completed university and he needed a job. <laughs> then you tell him, oh, come and sit here. I'll be my bookkeeper. Yeah. Somebody will call you and say, oh, your mates from school will call you and say, oh, my husband has lost his job. And so come and be my manager here. You wake up one day, you realize that all those you have employed are all chaff. <laughs> and they are those who, who, who will cause the problem for you. For because you. you have not employed them through the right channels. Mm. And you have not test interviewed them, you have not seen their background, you have not. So there, the question comes, is it efficiency or loyalty? Okay. It's a whole book. Are they right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll read that book. Yeah, but book. tell me about the shipping industry. I've heard a lot, uh, heard you talk about it a lot of times, and you say you love what you do. What do you do? Um, you know, when we talk about logistics, um, logistics is uh, one of the best businesses that you can find yourself into. Okay. Um, people don't know, but some of the richest men in the Bible, and some of the richest men ever lived, and some of the richest men who control the American and the European economy mm. are shipping magnates. Okay. They own ships, they own planes, they, they own proper work or movement. Okay. Any business can collapse, can have problems. But shipping will always strive. Why am I saying that? Because um, Africa, when we talk about logistics, we are now arriving. Yeah. Um, the challenges are here. Okay. Than the European and the US and Asia. They are up there. Because we, you, you, when you are in this industry, you have to be very innovative. Okay, come yes. up with new ideas. And uh, one secret also in this industry, you have to check your level of integrity. Mm. It's a business, if, if you are not honest, you can easily collapse. Okay. It's a business also, if your integrity level is low, mm. you end up destroying your name. Okay. So it's all about integrity. Africa is about to see its new dawn when it comes to shipping. Mm. And uh, some of us are ready and are working on it to control Africa logistics. Mm. Right now, if you want to ship cargo from here to Senegal, you have to go all the way to Belgium before you can come to Senegal. Okay. Say many African countries. And some of us will find solutions to problems. To problems. So, my business is um, I, I model it in trying to fix Africa logistic problems. Mm. What would you say is the biggest reform needed for the shipping industry? Um, I, I, I believe we need to look beyond ourselves. The biggest reform will be whereby we get the connections, mm. whereby we're controlling our own. Okay. Everything shipping is in the hands of the foreigners mm. and continue to be in the hands of the foreigners. Mm. And some of us who say, you know, it's not just about talking. It's not just about uh, um, singing your own song. Yep. But I believe that very soon, uh, Magdan could be able to control the vessels on the water mm. and be able to um, be a giant when it comes to cargo movement by air. That's quite a big ambition. You are uh, ambitious. It, it, it's, it's how you, you do it. <laughs> it's how you do it.
Okay, and you believe in yourself, you can do it. Oh, God has been there for me for a very long time, and he's still there. <laughs> and he always find me the solution. There are a lot of young guys out there who want to start up their own businesses. There are some who don't even know where to start from. There are those who don't have the resources. Where should they start from? You know, um, young guys of these days are not patient. And they are not ready to serve. Okay. And they want to be rich as of yesterday. <laughs> and that's a big problem. <laughs> and they don't have patience. And, <laughs> they uh, want it quick. They want it quick. And <laughs> I always say that, you know. It, it's not so difficult. But to start the right business and to grow successful, the secret is attitude. Mm. As I keep saying, I always say it. If you want to be very successful, 70% is your attitude. Okay. 25% is your skill. Be skill. 5% mm. is knowledge. Okay. So if you don't have the right attitude, how do you expect to be, to be okay. rich? To get there. So young men who want to start should be ready to serve and learn. Okay. There's too much money out there. There's too much money. Um, I can tell you, I can just walk on this street. I can always make money. Okay. But you need the right attitude. You need the right attitude to, to make. Attitude also embedded in it some level of integrity. Okay. Attitude also embedded in it some level of humility. Mm -mm. Attitude also embedded in it some level of... Uh, um, workmanship, okay. you know, how you work with the world around you. Mm. So, if you ask me, young men are sleeping too much. Okay. And they are living too big. They need to wake up. They need to wake up. But they of course, up, yeah. um, people admire you because of the passion you have to see the young people develop. Where do you derive that passion from? It's because of where I'm coming from. I mean, you can hardly survive. So if God had brought me this far, mm -hmm. I, um, I, I need to give back. To society. If my generation, because look, at the end of the day, it is not how rich Macaulay was, but how many people have helped. And mine growing up or out of I mean, it's, it, it's actually not about the money. If I ask you right now to tell me the richest man in the 70s, can you remember? <laughs> I'm not sure I will. Exactly. <laughs> but if I ask you to tell me some of the great men in life, you will be able to tell me, mention a few names. Definitely. That is all about life. Hmm. It's not how rich you have been or you are, but how many people can point hands at you, say, if you had not been. Hmm. Uh, Aisha, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been here. Okay, so that's the legacy you want that's to leave. That's the legacy I want. And also, there are so many opportunities in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, the Entrepreneurial Challenge, what will soon be, the season two will soon be on TV. You will notice that uh, it's not about the money I'm giving to the young men. Mm -hmm. Because the past owner uh, one hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. It's not about the money, but okay. in every business, is the man behind the business. Okay. A lot of people think it's about the money I'm doing out to entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs, but no, I'm looking at the person behind the business. Okay. I ran McDonald for over fifteen years. Nobody knew who was behind the behind business. Behind it. Wow. Okay. So today I'm sitting here, everybody is getting to know. That's Never be ahead of your business. Okay. You always have to let your business be ahead of you. Mm. Magdan is bigger than me. Okay. Yeah. I am not Magdan. Mm. My name is Nisha. <laughs> My name is Macaulay. 
<laughs> I can never be bigger than my business. Okay. Immediately you are bigger than your business, then there's a problem. You're in for trouble. You are in for trouble. Well, I've heard you say a number of times that you've not gotten even half or quarter of where you want to be. Isn't that uh, over ambition? Hey, not, not really. You know, um, you tell me. I'm 50 now. Okay. Right? And it's been too long. Too long. And just tell me which industry in this country is controlled by a Ghanaian. No industry. Mm -hmm. Every industry, every sector okay. is controlled by a foreigner. Mm. And I'm sitting here not able to control a single industry in my country and be satisfied no. with the little that I'm getting. Okay. <laughs> and thinking I'm a superstar. Mm. It's a shame. Okay, so for you, this is just the beginning. I'm not even, I'm, if you ask me uh, to put it on barometer, I'm around 30%. Of where you want to where be? Where I want to be. Wow. Yeah. 30%. 30%. At what point would you say you are fulfilled? Um, I want to see, you know, when you grow in isolation, that is not the best. I want to see the generation coming after me mm. to derive and benefit from my hard work. Okay. I mean, you, you leave the shores of Ghana, you go, the Rockefellers and the rest, they are build institutions, research institutions, hospitals, schools, they are developing infrastructure. They have also helped the economies to, to grow. Mm in a way, and they are creating a whole empire. They have created a whole empire. Okay. That, that empire is, 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 is bringing serious res results in research and, and other things. Okay. For now, I will be fulfilled if I'm able to provide a very strong shoulder okay. for the next generation to stand on my shoulder. Okay. Immediately, somebody stand on your shoulder, the person becomes bigger than you. And taller than you. And taller than you. That's what you want. That is what I want. And that's when you would say you are fulfilled. Yes. Well, that's yeah. a very generous um, decision to take. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not really about me. It's okay. about what you create. I just opened my private jet terminal. Okay. A lot of people think it's, uh, it's about me. I'm too ambitious. Mm. But I just brought in three private jets. Wow. To run that private terminal. Mm. Right. It's okay. going to be one of the best in Africa. Mm -hmm. This is the level we need to take my industry and other industry to. So it, I, it's never too tall. Mm. The opportunities are there. And we have to humble ourselves to listen to the voice of God. Yeah. to guide our steps. Is your mom alive? Uh, my mom just passed. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, she my just condolence. Yeah. But I'm sure she influenced you a lot. Well, oh, it's an illiterate mother. Those days, I mean, if you don't stay home and pound fufu, <laughs> you will not eat before you go to bed. You know, that kind of life. Yeah. An illiterate mother, if you go to your Kobolo, do your <laughs> Kobolo thing, expeditions, uh, she'll come and beat you in the school. <laughs> I mean, imagine Saito and your mother, and see your mother coming then. My God. will come and tell the teachers that I want done, bring them out. And they'll bring you? They'll bring you. And she will take the cane and lash you. In front of yeah, everyone. <laughs> So that's, 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 may her soul rest in peace. May her soul rest in peace. Daniel Nishia <laughs> Macaulay, he's my guest tonight. And I'm really, really having fun listening to his growing up. And of course, I'm sure you may have noticed that he supports a whole lot of sporting activities. Tennis, boxing, what else? Football. Football and all of that. But he has passion also for some of them. Do you play football? Yeah, I played when I was young, but now I'm stopping contact sports. 
okay, but he does one particular one perfectly. When we return from this break, he will be telling us about his soccer passion, his passion about football, tennis, and all of that. And also, tell us about this book he's putting together. What should we expect? Because I'm the first to read that voluminous book. You can imagine Magdan telling you about his life. All of that after this break, do stay tuned in. Welcome back to Pure Personality Profile. Daniel Ninshai Macaulay is still my guest tonight. We're having some fun here. Mr. Macaulay, before we went on that break, we were talking about how you've been able to support a lot of the sporting activities. Where from this passion for sports? Well, it's only, it's, it's not really about sports. It's anything that brings impact. I like the society. The society. And I picked on sports because sports bring people together. The impact in sports uh, is huge. Definitely. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, I've never regretted uh, using my money to support uh, sports in so many uh, areas. Okay. I mean, uh, you can remember I took over the Ghana tennis till today. Tennis is. Uh, it's a big thing now. It is. Yes. I have built some few astro tests. Mm. And you know, I, it, it, it doesn't, if you look, building, right now I'm building the astro test in the Teshi. Okay. I just uh, finished the Labadi one. Mm. Uh, looking at one in two, I'm putting two in Ada. Okay. I'm wow. putting one in East Legon. Okay. I mean, the standard that I'm going with the AstroTel, one AstroTel will cost almost eight million. But the impact that that uh, AstroTel brings to a community yes. is huge. I chose sports because you don't need certificate to run. <laughs> You don't need a certificate to play football. But you have love for tennis. Yes. Tell me about your passion. I, I love tennis because tennis is an individual game. Tennis is a disciplined game. Tennis is a game that um, train every part of you, I mean, as an individual sport. Uh, tennis is also a game that is for love. Mm. You know, tennis is also a game that this country and the youth can take it very far. I play myself yeah. and I enjoy playing tennis. I think I would have the opportunity to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, viewers be expecting it from here. We'll be going to the tennis court to play some tennis and then he can show us his yeah. skills. But of course, when I came to your office, I counted a number of awards. I mean, the last time I was there, I'm sure now it's getting to 100, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost count. You've lost count? Honestly, I've lost count. Still <laughs> counting. <laughs> I still count, yeah, I've lost count. The yeah. best uh, uh, entrepreneur of the year, best, so CEO, many of yeah, them. I mean, all of them. Marketing man of the year, chamberman of the year, almost. Uh, I have won almost everything. Wow. Both uh, locally and internationally. Mm. Yes, I, I, I saw one from the um, Emmy, the yes, Emmy Awards. Emmy Award. that There's you... some from uh, the Millennium Award from Spain, mm. some African awards wow. for being the best logistics company in wow. Africa. Wow. Um, Transport Awards mm. and some entrepreneurial. In, I've, I've categorized my award in two phases, the mm. corporate ones and my individual ones. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we're still winning. How, <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, it humbles me. It does? It humbles me and it tells me that hard work pays. You know, it never come, it never come cheap. Yeah. Yeah, through hard work and discipline. Mm. And also, one thing I was telling my children is uh, you can attain that height with a low level of integrity. Mm. So yeah. uh, I always say, you, maybe you see it in my book, 
At times also, 99% of the people will doubt you. Mm. It's either you are making a grave mistake or you are making history. So um, how many of them, um, the, your children, I'm sure you're, you, I know you have two wives. Yes, I have two beautiful, intelligent wives. I'm sure they're so proud of you. Uh, I hope so. How I many hope. of the kids? Well, we might be proud of anything, but I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, man, don't we? <laughs> you know, women are not to be understood anyway. You only have to care about, for them and respect them. That's it. Yeah, if you, you try you, to understand them, you will get crazy. <laughs> you, 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 want to, you want to understand a woman, you go crazy. I disagree on uh? that one. <laughs> I think it's rather men. <laughs> so, how many of the kids? I have ten kids. Wow. I have ten kids. Ten, how many ten, boys? How many yeah, girls? Five boys, five girls. Equally God, distributed. I, I thank God for the life of my wives. Uh, they are disciplinarians. Mm. They have uh, really been there for the kids and okay. myself. Mm. Um, I respect them. Wow. I them. Wow. Which of your kids are, are towing your tennis line and which of them are towing the business? I'm sure you've already started orienting their minds for business. Oh, yes. I, I really don't ask my children if they grow what they want to be. Mm -hmm. I ask them what solutions they want. I want my children to, to, to find solutions to problems. To problems, okay. You know, two of my kids are playing wonderful tennis. Wow, already? Yes, uh, as I'm talking to you now, they're on their way to Lithuania, okay. Eastern Europe to play mm -hmm. the Fed Cup. Mm -hmm. I want to have more children in a way. You want to have more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a football team? Yeah, I want to I wanna have, I wanna have 12. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, the tribe of Judah. <laughs> uh, Twelve is a perfect number. Oh, wow. So have you have two more to go. Two more to go. <laughs> I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. I see fishes around you all the time, not to be consumed, but you want it around you. That's quite strange. I can see your beautiful aquarium there. You want to take me there to tell me what the fish yeah. That's you. Yeah, we can look at yeah, that. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about this love for fishes. Um, just, just, just look at it. These are Japanese koi. Very expensive koi. Okay. Uh, but I brought these particular ones from Israel. Oh wow. Yes. I they mean, are beautiful. They are very colorful. Very. Um, and I put them in this tank. When you are stressed out, just be looking at them. They make you forget about your problems. I think so. And also, they are, it's a therapy that mm -hmm. calms you down, tells you how wonderful God is. It's creature. Yeah, I mean, this is a wonderful animal. I have almost all my houses, I have fishes there. Fishes there. I'm admiring these fishes and um, viewers don't forget that we'll be going into his underground club <laughs> for him to show us some DJing skills. Remember he said he grew up in, in Labadi. Labadi. You can't be in Labadi and not know how to dance and not know how to DJ. DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be showing us that skills when we get into the underground club. I want to thank you so much for talking to us. Dr. Daniel Nishai Macaulay, who's been my guest tonight. He's been hosting us in his home, and it's been wonderful talking to you. We're moving straight to the um, club, the underground club. I'm so much interested <laughs> in that one. He's going to show us some DJing skills. Stay with me. Enjoy.
Let me wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank May you. God bless your new age with wisdom and excellence. May he make you greater and stronger. Thank you, thank you. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. At the same time, next week we'll be bringing you another interesting personality on PM Personality Profile. My beautiful dress was made by Needle Thread Designs. Call them on 0543. 196451 or visit their showroom at 34 West Loop Tessano. My beautiful makeup is also supplied by NASA Cosmetics. Get one for yourself at Sierra Beauty Clinic inside the Palace Mall on the Spring Test Road. They also treat my face and make it look silky smooth. Call them on 0242348799 or 0244975370. Seven zero. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Remember, we are moving into the tennis court. He will still go and show us some <laughs> skills. Enjoy the rest of our program. <laughs> We need veggie and you check check with it. We have remo and you to be to be. Send me the Oka Kra or Fago P. Pass in my mates, no see away. Captain Addy, what them I say? Me, I no one talk anything. Only they call me for my brain. Young Bakin Chiki, ya day. Nasa Yanzo Kungani. This time me, I go the party. Addy said, Kungani. The first techniques in tennis is you always keep your eye on the ball. Okay, I'm keeping my eyes straight on Get the ready. ball. I'm ready. Wish me luck, viewers. Hooray! She got it, she got it. Go for it. Nice! Good! So that means you're athletic. I'm doing well. Let me get you. Nice one. One. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Give it up to me. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I'm a good coach, right? Oh, you are. Thank you so much, Mr. Macaulay, for talking to us. We really, really admire you a lot, and we encourage you to do what you do. Thank you. Keep on doing good. Keep up the good work.